Next for you tonight on BTG1, resistance is futile. Hey, how's it going everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. We're going to restore another writing implement today. This is going to be a Esterbrook J-Series Double Jewel. This is from around 1948 to 1952 or so. It is a fountain pen. You can see here we have a broken jewel on this end and another chipped broken jewel on the other end. They only make, from what I can tell, I can't find both sizes because these are different sizes on one end and the other. I can only find one of the sizes, so I would only be able to replace one of them if I was gonna replace those. And um, this is just gonna be kind of my everyday writing pen, most likely, so uh, for personal use, so I'm not that worried about it. The nib on this is an Esterbrook 9550. I don't know, you can just kind of make that out there. From some of the resources I can find online, it's supposedly a pretty good writing nib, uh, and it's a very fine writing nib. I would probably prefer something a little broader, but we'll see how it works out in the end. You can see there the remains of the old ink sack falling out onto the desk, and it's just completely dried and crusted and unusable. We're going to have to replace the ink sack as is very common on these. You can see the big problem here is that we're missing a part. We're missing what's called the J bar, which goes down in there and applies pressure to the ink sack whenever you lift the lever. So we're gonna have to find a replacement for that missing part. Uh, also, you can see the crusted old remains of the ink sack there that have been glued with shellac uh, to the end of that, um, to the tip feed there. I don't know what you call these parts. I'm pretty new to restoring fountain pens, so this is, you know, if I get some terms wrong, don't hold it against me. This is just uh, an experiment, first of all, to see if I can restore one of these old fountain pens like this. And it's just something that I enjoy. I enjoy collecting stuff of just old vintage things of quality, and we're just going to see if we can record that. But we're going to speed this portion up where we're removing this old shellac. And I don't know, maybe some people will think I'm doing this wrongly, but I'm not that worried about it. Like I said, this is going to be my everyday writer. Scientific means are about directing and controlling the machine. How do we step back in as the priests of nature, the scientific priest class, to commandeer evolution and to reboot it and kickstart it in the direction of advancing the species and transcending man becoming gods? Literally. So if you don't recognize it and you haven't yet guessed, that red bulb is from a solder sucker. Uh, you can get those still online. I think you can get those mechanical solder suckers like that. But here, clearly, I'm using this uh, in some hot, soapy water to suck up the water uh, through the tip, through the nib, through the ink feed. And the hope is that that's, that's going to help clean out any residual ink that might be in there. Um, I did notice that it was a little bit harder at first, uh, but then once I started getting it flowing, it uh, went ahead and worked pretty well. So I'm confident I got most of the crap out of there without having to disassemble the rest of this completely. Okay, so now that the ink feed and the nib portion are completely clean, we're going to put some of this uh, cement, this shellac, around the tip of this. This is a pen sack cement. Uh, again, down in the description, I will put links where if you want to do this sort of thing yourself, you can find all of these resources. There you can see I got it from vintagepens.com, this stuff. Uh, you can also, uh, Anderson Pens is another good resource where you can get stuff. Um, but this is an ink sack <clears throat> that is um, a number 16, and I ordered it without actually knowing for sure if it was going to work this size, but it does turn out to work just fine. What we're going to have to do here is cut the ink sack to size. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring exactly where to cut. So I've put the ink sack down inside of the body, the housing for the pen, and I'm gonna cut right at the opening first of all. So we'll get rid of that much first. And then what we have to do is additionally, we have to get rid of the amount that's going to be mounted onto the feed. So we have to get rid of just a little bit more of the sack. 
you can see here we have to cut back again that far because this ink sack has to slide over that uh, that little nib at the end. So we'll get rid of that much again. And now that should be the correct size. And now it's time to put our pin sack cement onto that little area where the sack will rest. So we're just painting over this, this last little bit of the feed right here, all the way around. And again, this pin sack cement is basically just shellac. So if you already have shellac in some form, you don't necessarily have to buy this stuff. A lot of people will advise and use some really kind of fancy uh, for-purpose spreaders, is what they're called, uh, sack spreaders. But here you can see I get pretty good results just using uh, some needle nose pliers. I just kind of spread it with the needle nose and pull it down over there and it goes on fairly easily. No problems really. I just want to push it all the way up as far as I can get it. But now we've got, yeah, brand new sack on that part. And now we just need to go ahead and order the J bar so that we can uh, put this thing to good use. And luckily the website for Anderson pins had exactly the J bars that I needed. Uh, I ordered this 54 millimeter J bar, which it says is for the transitional and dollar pin models. And for the J, LJ, and SJ series, I was supposed to actually order a different one, um, but I did not. I ordered this 54 and it ends up working just fine. So I don't know. Um, Maybe both of these J-bars would work in this pen. I'm just really grateful and frankly a little bit shocked that parts like this are even still made for these vintage pens. Okay, so some time has passed since the, uh, we looked at this pen last and uh, I found out that I was missing a part. It's like you can see this lever right here. There's supposed to be something inside of here that this pushes down against and squeezes this so that when it releases it sucks in uh, ink, but the the piece was missing, so I had to go and order one of these. This is called a J bar. I got this from Anderson Pins, who seems to be a pretty good vendor of this sort of thing, and I paid nine dollars for it, five dollars plus four dollars shipping. Anderson Pins. I will point to their website. Uh, no affiliation whatsoever. They just seem to be pretty good at what they do, and they have a decent selection of stuff for these old pins, which is kind of astounding honestly that they're even still making anything like this so this is what was is missing so this slides inside you're not going to be able to see it but there is a half of the inside of this is kind of filled with a semicircular guide i guess more or less on the other side so this can only go in one direction the lever will press down on this and this whole piece will go like this and press down on the sack so let's see if we can get that in there all the way in the correct orientation. Like I said, there's a guide in here that's on the opposite side of, of the uh, cavity. So we'll push that, I think. Think that's think that's got it. Okay, you can see the J bar up here on the top that I just inserted, but you can also see the semicircular guide that fills up the lower half. And this sack, when it goes in there, it will slide in between those. And what we have to do, we have to put some talc. This has to have no oils or perfumes in this talc. That's why you can't just really get over the counter talc. So they say, I don't know if this to be true, but the pen professionals say you have to get a certain kind of just straight talc to put on these sacks. Otherwise it will more rapidly deteriorate your ink sack. Just get a little bit of it and coat this. I don't know, probably don't have to use a lot. This might even be too much, I don't know. This is the first uh, this is the first pen that I've ever 
serviced. This will be number one for me. So it's a learning experience. Um, so I'm, I'm going by what I have seen and heard from people who do this a lot. So I'm just kind of following their guidance on this. I'm not going to go as far as to disassemble. A lot of people will uh, even disassemble the nib. And uh, this is called the it's called the ink feed or something of that nature. This little piece right here behind the nib. So they will even uh, take these pieces apart. I have another pen that I'm going to service later, a couple more, that I may do that, have to do that on to clean them. This one, it seemed like it cleaned up pretty nicely the way it is. So I think i got enough talc, but I'll just maybe put a little bit more on there. But... We'll see if this uh, lever works now, and it does. You can see there that it actually has a spring to it. So that's good. Um, that's what we want. We want to make sure that it's also moving down, and it is. So let's go ahead and assemble the pin. And basically, this is just press fit in. Some people will actually put more shellac right here. I don't. I don't see that that is necessary on this pen because the friction is pretty good to keep it together. We're just going to press fit it. And I, what I want to do is keep the nib, <clears throat> I think, in line with this just to make it aesthetically correct. Um, so that's it. Just press that back together. Really, a simple procedure to service one of these pens. It's not. Uh, not difficult to do and it's kind of rewarding you know putting something back together that was non-working before let's put some ink in it and try it out now I could go as far as to uh, polish this all up and everything I'm not I'm not gonna bother with all that you can also change these little uh, these are called jewels at the end you can see that that has been kind of broken off that little plastic they call it a jewel at the end and this one on this end also has been half cracked on the edge I don't know it looked like maybe somebody tried to get something under there maybe and pry which is I don't know if they thought that they had to do that maybe to get the pen apart or something but no you don't have to mess with those but I'm not gonna bother with replacing these they only make one size that I could find on eBay you can get one of these, I forget which, but you, I could replace one of them because they do make replacements at least in one of these sizes, but they don't make it in the other size. I think it's in this size. So I could replace this one, but this one would still be cracked. But, you know, I'm not restoring this to for a customer. This is going to be my personal pen. So, you know, I'll use it as much as I guess I can. Um, but this i believe is going to work let's let's get some ink and try it out okay here's the ink we're going to fill this with this is pelican tint by uh, gunther wagner so this is actually german ink 62.5 milliliters worth two fluid ounces this was the most bang for the buck that i could find in blue which is the which is what i wanted okay so basically we want to just dip dip the pen in and then uh push this in and release it. We'll do this a couple times. You can hear it sucking up. Okay, I think it seems a little bit heavier, so I think this pen might now be full of ink. Um, we'll get something to wipe off the tip. Okay. I may try using some sandpaper just to smooth it a little bit. It's a bit scratchy. Ooh, it ripped the paper right there, so that's not good. Again, this is a learning experience for me. This is the first uh, fountain pen I will have ever worked on. Um, I'm going to try this nail file uh, just lightly on the nib to just try to take the scratchiness edge off of it. It is a bit too scratchy, really, to, to write with.
So after sanding and shaping the nib with several different grits of sandpaper and also uh, that nail file, uh, I was able to get this much, much less scratchy and it really felt nice to write with uh, after I got it shaped up a little bit. So I think this is going to be a really nice pen. Uh, the, the longer I've written with it, actually, the better it writes. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this restoration on this Esterbrook Series J fountain pen. Uh, this has been a new experience for me, you know, but this channel's always been about repairing various things, and really this is no different. This is just another example of something that is old, vintage, and cool that can be repaired and uh, restored to working order. So until next time, we will see y'all later. And that brings us to the end of our schedule for the evening. So it's good night from BTG1.